March 15th. Oh, it's about 7.15 in the morning. I am on my way to pick up my Friday treat before heading to school. The Friday treat being um, a cold brew and egg bites from Starbucks. Um, I don't know that I'll be able to eat partake in it right away because then I'm going to school. I need to be there at 7.30 um, because we're going to be in the front of the school this morning promoting the color run, passing out flyers, trying to get the people on board. Um, so I'll probably have to just drop everything off and head out to the front of the school cause a ruckus for a minute and then I'll get to eat it um, so I don't really have anything to say between the end of yesterday's vlog and now it's really just good morning and I know some of us enjoy my little taste test um, when I get to Starbucks so the other thing I forgot to mention yesterday in history is after we talk about Thomas Jefferson and Alexander Hamilton and their differences on how the country should be ran. I do show the rap battle. I think it's the second one that I show. Um, and I always enjoy like watching kids watch it now with like proper context because every year some some kids have seen it just because it was so popular and it's on Disney Plus and know all the songs. Um, but they don't necessarily know why the songs are what they are and why the lyrics are what they are. And then some kids have never seen it um, and now are seeing one of the rap battles and they understand why what is being said is said. So like, especially kids that are really into rap music and pay attention to lyrics, like some of the kids yesterday were like chuckling at the right places because they understood what was going on. So um, I do show that. This is the second year I've done it because I've only used TCI twice and I've only gotten that far in history twice in all my years teaching middle school because of the pandemic and everything else. So I realized I forgot to say that, but yeah, yesterday I left work. I came home. I walked Wolfie. Um, Wolfie should be very thankful because I walked him in extreme winds. Um, at one point yesterday, the winds were blowing out here at 80 miles per hour. So when we say it's really windy out here, like it's windy. And so imagine walking against the wind with the dog that feels like he has to smell every single blade of grass and crevice in the sidewalk. So I walked him, I came home, didn't do any work, ate some dinner, watched some TV, and went to bed. I did not work out this morning because I knew either way I was going to have to do a shortened, shortened version of a Friday workout. So normally on Fridays I do a 45 minute workout. And Monday through Thursday, I do a 60 minute workout. So the Friday workout is already shortened, but then I knew I needed this workout to be even shorter to make sure I get to school by 7.30, which I'm a little nervous about now, um, which would have equated to me doing a 30 minute workout. And yes, something is better than nothing, but I opted to just skip the workout today, knowing that I've already worked out three times a week, which is good. And knowing that if I really feel guilty, I could come home after work and work out if I felt so inclined. I don't know that I will feel inclined in that way, but it's an option. So um, I didn't work out this morning. Do I feel guilty? I do. Am I going to get over it though? I will. Like I'm growing as a person in that regard. So. I could go through the drive-thru. There doesn't look like there's a lot of cars there. Sometimes you get in that drive-thru and there's actually cars around the way that you just didn't see. And sometimes the drive-thru moves really slow. So I'm just gonna walk in here. Um, hope for the best. The Starbucks is always busy on Friday and I try and avoid it. This is the one that I go to at six o'clock in the morning because they are that busy. So wish me luck. I don't have a minute to spare. Mm. Okay, it was ready. Put my little drink in my sleeve. People ask 
frequently where I get this from. This is from Amazon. If you just type in cold drink sleeve, you'll get a whole bunch of options. And then I just pick the one that I want. I had a black and white one that I think I accidentally threw away. Um, and that's unfortunate. This lady's waiting for me to come out. And this lady I used to work with, but she doesn't recognize me. Yeah, anyway, if you just go to Amazon, type cold drink sleeve, you'll get a bunch of options. I just picked the one that I think is cute. I was in a very cute dog mood at the time, so I got this one right here. You have to do your tongue like that. <laughs> you have to go to really get the taste, um, in case you didn't know. <laughs> um, let me do it one more time. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna give that an 8.5. So, it's pretty good. I'm just really sad they don't have the sugar cookie cold foam anymore, but good morning. I need to be at school um, in about nine minutes. And that's all I have to say right now. Um, I'm on my prep period. It's 1036. I have four minutes left. I feel like there was something I was supposed to do when I got in here. I need to get my time card out. Um, got to school at 730 like I needed to. And we passed out all our flyers. Uh, I think the kids had fun. They got a crash course in sales techniques. So it was really just like almost like door-to-door -door salespeople where I said you go up to those cars you hand them that flyer you let them know that we're having a color run that next Thursday is the last day to purchase uh, let the kids know they skip a mile make sure the flyer gets in the hand of a parent and not a student and we should have no flyers left by the end of the little time block we also had band out there playing the little fight song that they always play for rallies um, and then so we had eighth grade leadership and half of seventh doing it at the front of the school which is the main drop-off area and then sixth grade leadership and the other half of seventh doing it on the back end, end of the school which is where sixth grade families drop off their kids in the morning so that happened and then we had school started they worked on iReady testing until about 10 most kids are done I was entering grades and I'm I think I'm like 99% caught up at this point to the point where the office just called and said they had an extra sub and asked if I needed any assistance and I'm like I actually don't um, because I've gotten a lot done between me my aide, and some other things going on what was yesterday um, so there's that and one of my students that is now a sophomore came to visit because we have college and career day happening in the gym and so some of the high school kids come in to talk about the Abbott program so she popped in and that brought a tear to Taylor and I's eye because we miss her and um, I'm about to have leadership in a few minutes so also today is college and career day so we the, the spirit day is wear a college themed shirt so I'm wearing my college shirt I went to the University of Puget Sound in Washington State but um, so far the day is going well Aside from the fact that I'm experiencing a lot of guilt right now because I had my Starbucks, my egg bites, and then I just rammed a sprinkled donut in my mouth. And I shouldn't have done that <laughs> because I didn't exercise and I also have a cheat meal for dinner that I'm probably still going to have. So now I'm just experiencing a certain level of guilt <laughs> that I wasn't prepared for, but it is what it is. So... I am just here to check in. One of the things that I was grading though, while the kids are working on their tests, is we did a ratify the Constitution pamphlet project. Last year we made a pamphlet, but the pamphlet last year, I think was on, what was the chapter? Let me scroll back. Um, declaring independence, I think it was. And so I think I condensed that chapter down. Something happened where we didn't really do it this time around, but I liked the pamphlet project. So these have been done for a while. I just haven't had a chance to grade them. Um, there's some that are really good, some that are struggling. Uh, some of them are struggling with understanding the concept of what it means to ratify. So the, their slogan will say something like, 
don't ratify the Constitution, but then the inside of the pamphlet is giving reasons to ratify. So if that was the case, I would take a point and then I would comment on the back. Um, but some of them are very well done artistically. Some of them, like this one, it's a struggle. We don't know what the front of this pamphlet is from the back. It just looks like they got a piece of printer paper, drew on the front, and just folded it without any regard as to where things landed. So that happened. But that was the bell. Also, we're still struggling in the eighth grade to put our name on assignments, including projects. But let me go get these leadership kids and continue about my day. I'll talk to you later. It is... Um, almost six o'clock. I couldn't figure out what I was about to say. I'm obviously home in my room. Um, Woofy here and I say hi, Woof. We just got back from our walk. He got to play with his best little golden doodle friend, Eugene, who lives in the complex. Um, we ran into him and his parents while we were on our way back. And so he got to play outside for a little while and then we came in because it's pretty cold outside and windy. And I'm really just here to close out the vlog. Nothing really happened. I think the last time I spoke to you was the few minutes I had left in my prep period. My leadership class came in. That was a whirl whirlwind. We got our sunglasses in for the color run. I would have shown them to you if I had time. Um, but a group of students was taking inventory of how many sunglasses we actually got making sure they weren't damaged. Some kids were working on another promotional video for the color run that goes in our student newscast. One student is starting to script um, newscast segments for market day, which is a different thing that's going on later in the year. Um, other students were taking spirit count for teachers, making slideshows for the upcoming rally, filming videos for the rally. So everybody, like my leadership class is divvied up into committees and they all have a certain set of responsibilities that they were working on. So that happened and then in my core classes, both classes pretty much only got through the first three questions for mother to son. So we didn't get to any history today. And then the day was done. Um, the good news is it was pretty low key for me. It was one of those days where I didn't really do any teaching because everything they needed to do required them to be working independently and quietly while they did that. Um, I graded the social studies pamphlets, which I told you about, got those entered, and then I was just getting caught up on giving them points for grades. So um, we have the house system, and one of the ways they can earn points is by doing well on quizzes and tests, and I always get very behind on giving them their points for that, so I was backtracking and giving points where points were due. That's one of the things that I wish more teachers on my campus did more consistently. Some of them just don't do it because you forget, like I forget. Um, but I try and make a conscientious effort to go back and remember. Some of them just flat out don't want to do it. <laughs> Which is a whole nother conversation to me. I don't really understand why. Um, and some of the teachers that don't want to do it are also teachers that don't want kids to get attendance points. So I don't, I think for those teachers, I wish they would really take the time to understand what the house system is supposed to do, what it's about. Um, and so it's kind of frustrating in that regard because to me it's not equitable that there are some kids that are earning more points and they can use these points to buy things from the, the student store um they're just earning more points because they happen to be in a class with a teacher that is willing to at least give them the points um and then there's some students that aren't getting any points just because their teacher just doesn't want to do it or doesn't believe in doing it but that's another conversation for another day so um, then after school, I was continuing my work of adding points that I was behind on and then Taylor and I were talking for a long period of time just about all kinds of things. Um, and then I came home to walk the dog. So I'm actually going to take a shower right now and put on pajamas. There is some work that I need to do again. I don't, I'm not a proponent of doing work on a Friday night. Actually. I kind of am like even on the the times where I'm like I'm not doing any work this weekend I am for me a big proponent of doing everything that I need to get done that Friday to feel set up for the next week and then not touching any work for the weekend that that is a system that works well for me um, but right now I'm doing work tonight and I might do some 
other things over the weekend because I'm just in a really kind of busy season with the multiple things that are going on with leadership and some things I'm doing in my classroom. So again, I don't mind it. I just feel like I need to make that caveat so that no one's watching these videos thinking that I think teachers should work on the weekends or that I'm actually a proponent for it. I am a proponent for you doing things in the manner in which works for you. Um, it does not work well for me. I don't feel like a good teacher when I'm like, well, I did what I can. I'm leaving everything here. We're just going to figure it out when I get to work on Monday. That's just not even, it doesn't make me feel good as a teacher and it's just not my personality. Like I'm a pretty type A person and that goes against my <laughs> type A personality and it just causes me a lot of stress. Like it causes me more stress than I think it's worth. So that will probably happen this weekend is some work. I'm going to do some tonight. Tomorrow I'm getting my braids taken down. I'm going to go to my cousin who puts them in for me. She's going to take them down. We'll probably just go back to our little up ponytail with the curls. You're probably going to see that hairstyle for the rest of the school year. And on Sunday, I don't know. I'm probably going to start laundry tonight too because Saturday is my laundry day and I will be gone a good chunk of the day tomorrow so I might do that as well. Um, I'm going to also just dive in tonight and just accept the fact that um, this was a true cheat day. I didn't work out this morning. I had Starbucks. I ate a donut and we're just going to go hard and have whatever I want for dinner and not worry about the calories. Calories don't exist today. Um, and I think that's it. I feel like there was something else I wanted to say. Oh, I've had a couple people ask. I think it's a couple of different people. It may be the same person if it's you. Here I am. Ask if I've ever considered doing a classroom management video. I feel like I've done one in the past. Maybe when I taught elementary school. Or maybe when I was comparing elementary school to middle school. I don't know. Um, and I haven't because I don't really know... When people say classroom management, it means different things to different people. So if you would be interested in seeing a classroom management video from me, from me, I need to put you down because my arm is hurting. Um, let me know in the comments, but also let me know what does that mean to you? Like, does it mean managing behaviors? Does it mean staying organized? Um, does it mean systems in class to keep their class running smoothly? I'm not really sure what it means. And then even still, if it's behavior, I, I truly, and it's not me just saying it to get out of doing it. I truly don't necessarily have like this super long list of things that I do, um, to manage behaviors. Like I don't even have a list of classroom rules. I really feel like my class just operates under a general understanding of what my expectations are for their behavior at this age level and how they should be conducting themselves in class, how they should be speaking to me, how I should be speaking to them, how they should be speaking to each other. And it's just me having conversations about that, but it's not, I wouldn't say it's a formalized plan. I don't have a document anywhere. I don't have a list of rules. Um, so I always am apprehensive about making a classroom management video if that's what someone's looking for because I feel like they would be disappointed because I don't have like a lot to give. I feel like when I answer that question about behavior, I feel like I'm answering in a very theoretical way. And for some people that, that doesn't work. Like they want an actual like list of steps and things to do like a checklist like some teachers have had in their TPT store and I just don't have that. Um... So I don't know, I guess if you're interested in a classroom management video, comment below and let me know what you mean by that. And then I'll kind of go through the comments and see if it's anything I can even create a video out of, or maybe it's just things I could try and be mindful of discussing in future vlogs that are related to teaching, but we'll see, let me know. But if you enjoyed this vlog, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. If you'd like to leave a comment, please feel free to do so. Like I say, all three of those things help my channel and my community and they do keep me motivated to keep going and as always i hope that you guys are well and if you're not well please be well and i will see you guys in the next vlog sometime next week Bye.